Hi, welcome to another episode of the Nourish in Africa podcast. Our podcast series provides quick, practical and useful information applicable to agri-food businesses in Africa. Hello everyone, happy new month. Welcome to the special month of March, a month dedicated to celebrating women all across the world and especially their contribution to history and society. My name is Yvonne Fuswapia. I'm the Chief Investment Officer for Wangara Green Ventures based in Accra, Ghana. Wangara is an impact fund addressing the missing middle gap in financing for early stage businesses that have an environmental focus. Our priority sectors are renewable energy, energy efficiency, waste and water management, and climate smart agriculture. We also support commercially viable and high impact businesses that want to go green. In my work, one of the questions we have asked continually is why despite our desire to support women-led businesses and contribute to bridging the gender financing gap, very few of female founded businesses come under our radar. So on this special occasion, I just want to share a few insights on how I think women in business can position themselves for funding. While I know investors also have a role to play through innovation to bring gender parity in entrepreneurship. However, that's a topic for another day. Today, I'll share five tips on how women can position themselves for funding for their businesses. Before I start, let me just say that there is no magic formula or any peculiar strategy for women than there is for men when it comes to fundraising. It takes the same level of intent and hard work for both genders. In fact, with a recent advocacy for gender parity and interest from investors, women entrepreneurs may be at a good advantage in this decade to raise money than men if they are intentional about it. In Africa, for instance, it is estimated that only 2% of women entrepreneurs have access to capital, even though Africa is known to have the highest size of women entrepreneurs than anywhere else in the world. That's an alarming statistic, isn't it? Given that women are known to invest about 90% of their income or wealth into their families or communities. So how can we change all of this? My first step is network. The importance of having a great network of relevant people and institutions cannot be overemphasized. They say your network is better than your net worth. To raise money for your business, you need to be deliberate about researching on people or institutions who can finance you or introduce you to financiers and make a conscious effort to reach out to those people. You will not necessarily get responses from many of them, but if you keep pushing and showing up at relevant conferences and events, you will surely get to one or two or more financiers who find your business exciting and would like to fund you. Secondly, I'll say, be prepared. As you begin your fundraising journey and start to network, Be prepared. As you speak to investors and potential financiers, pause and ask yourself if your business is really ready to receive someone else's money. In our Ghanaian culture, and I believe to a large extent in sub-Saharan Africa, it is believed that you clean your house before your guest or visitor arrives. Being investment ready is therefore one sure bet to get investors' attention. Do you have a business plan? a strategic growth plan? How are you managing your finances as a business owner? Are you meeting your statutory obligations such as paying of your taxes or pension contributions for your workers? If you don't have the time or lack the capacity to prepare business plans, for example, then there are several service providers available to assist you at a fee. You could reach out to an accelerator or an incubator or even a business consultant to assist you. Thirdly, I'll say get a great team, including advisors and mentors. Another critical aspect on being investment ready or prepared is to check the expertise and capability of the members of your team. 
Team building is very important in fundraising. So who are the people that you are working with in your business? What are their expertise in the work that they are doing? And if you are an entrepreneur who is also in management, then how does your team skill set complement or supplement your own skill set? Again, are the interests of the team members aligned with your own interests? Do you have advisors, mentors, or coaches as an entrepreneur? These are people who can be very helpful when building a business, especially if you have a young female entrepreneur with a relatively young team. Getting an advisor with rich experience in your sector of operation can really boost your team capacity when presenting to investors. Further, I'll say be confident and believe in yourself and your business. You need confidence to be able to reach out or even network. As a woman entrepreneur, you already have the guts and what it takes. But you need to believe in yourself and your business or idea. If you are not confident about your own business idea, how can anyone be attracted to it? In venture capital, we usually say we bet on the jockey, not the horse. Investors will therefore check for alignment with you, the entrepreneur, before investing in your business. So if you are not confident in yourself to bring your vision to drive your own vision, then you will struggle to raise capital for your business. Finally, I'll say step up and pitch. In my opinion, many women are unable to raise capital because they are not stepping up and pitching. From my experience leading deal teams, we find at least three times more men cold calling or being introduced to us than their female counterparts. We usually have to even go after the female founders who we believe may be a fit for our fund strategy. Many times, they are just not keen on even continuing on the fundraising conversation. It's a tough world raising capital, but when investors are busy, trust me, they are more likely to consider businesses who come to them than the ones they have to chase. So to raise funding, you just need to pitch to many investors and hopefully end up with one. In conclusion, I'll say it's a good time to be a woman entrepreneur, given all the conversations around gender equality. However, as women, we need to do more. We need to step up, be ambitious and daring to be able to raise funding for our businesses. I hope you found this useful. I wish every woman entrepreneur out there in this month of March a happy Women's Month. Keep going and keep up the good work. I would like to hear what you think about these insights. You can contact me on plus 233-266-001244 or send an email to y.ofosu-appiah at wangaracapital.com. Have a very fruitful month. Thank you for listening to the Nourishing Africa podcast. Do join us next time.